Hi everyone, I'm David Casey and I'll be the instructor for the three-day course OAS Top 10 Exploitation and Effective Safeguards this summer at AppSec Europe 2016 in Rome, Italy. The OWASP Top 10 Most Critical Web Application Security Risk has done a great job promoting awareness for the developers. Along with many cheat sheets, they provide valuable tools and techniques to web developers. But such a great source of information could be overwhelming for the programmer who wants to learn about security. This course aims at providing all web developers deep hands-on knowledge on the subject. I'm a web penetration tester with a back developer background. So after spending 15 years building websites, I spent the last decade breaking them. To me, programmers need to understand how vulnerabilities are exploited by hackers in order to understand how to protect their applications. Understanding attacks to better protect web applications is at the core of this course. So let me give you a quick demo on SQL injection, which is part of the first of the OWASP Top 10 injection vulnerabilities. Okay, so here's the vulnerable web application. The login screen is vulnerable to SQL injection. But first, let's log in as John Smith using the password secret1 and click on submit. So let's take a look at what happened in the background. So here is an SQL statement which was used to query the database. So here we can see that uh, the application selects all columns from the users table where the username is equal to Smith J, the uh, username we entered in the uh, username field and the password is equals to secret one. So if we execute this query, we can see here that there is indeed a um, user in the database matching the, the, those criteria, and we, that's why we're able to successfully log in. So let's go back to the application, log out, and do something a little bit different. So I've entered here a single quote. Uh, it's difficult to see, but uh, anyway, that's what it is, a single quote in the username field, and I don't put anything in the password field. If I click on submit, look at that. We see an error um, from coming from the database uh, telling us three things. First, there is an SQL injection vulnerabilities in uh, this field. Second, we see that MySQL is the backend database. And the third thing we've learned is that a single quote broke um, the uh, query sent to the database. So let's log out, click on the login screen, and let's go back to our SQL to see what happened. So effectively, the username entered was a single quote like this. So as you can see here with the uh, a little red line underneath like this statement, the database says it's an invalid SQL query. Why? Because, uh, as you know, uh, a, uh, any varchar to or any strings um, used in the database must be between single quotes or double quotes. So in this case, it's single quotes. So we open, um, let's put AAA as a uh, uh, username. So when we open a single quote, the database expects some kind of a string, could be an empty string also, and the database knows that this string is terminated by another single quote. But the database, again, doesn't know what to do with the third one, and that's why the uh, query is broken. And that's why we got this error uh, returned from the database. So uh, it's unfortunate, but uh, I see this quite often in my pen test that uh, developers keep uh, web applications in uh, debug mode in production. It's pretty common. So what happened? What can we do as an attacker to fix, if you want, this query? Then we may try to comment out the rest of that query using a pound sign. That's what you do. You use, sorry, with uh, MySQL. So effectively, all this will be treated as a comment by the database, and this is now a valid SQL query. 
In this case, we don't have any users uh, matching AA as a username, but if we type Smith J, you can imagine that uh, this will effectively return a valid record. So if we, an attacker, enter this string, and we'll try it right away, I don't know if you can see it, but the attacker can log in in the application without knowing the password. Let's try this. So I go back here and I'll paste this. So Smith J, singer quote, space, and a pound sign. Submit. Look at that. I was able to log in without any passwords. So if the attacker doesn't know any password at this point, it could enter maybe anything, a single quote, and then it needs this query to be valid and always return true. So again, let's go back to our SQL statement. So we'll assume that the attacker doesn't know any valid username. So it needs this WHERE clause to return true in order for that SELECT statement to return users. So a trick that an attacker could do is use OR something and something that will always be true. For example, one equals one. So anything or something true will always return true. Therefore, if we try this, we get all users from the database. So let's give it a try. We'll copy this and that's what the attacker has to enter in the field in order to um, log in without knowing anything about uh, any valid username. So look at that. So I'm logged in with Alice Stevens account, which is the first uh, account created in, a, in the uh, users table. And as you can see, uh, this guy is pretty rich, right? So we can go even further with that. So if we go and you look at the page source, we can see that um, the uh, HTTP POST request here sends a request to this URL, okay, big bank slash check credentials, and we were attacking the username field. So uh, knowing this information, I can use another tool to help me go faster called SQL Map. So effectively, SQL Map uh, will attack the URL enter here, so you remember big bank slash uh, check credentials, and what we want to do is we want to attack the username uh, field. And what uh, our goal now is to do a database search. Let's give it a try. As you can see, uh, SQL Map was able to quickly find three databases. Let's try to look at this one. So I will quickly enter Sorry, let me, uh, yeah, I'll quickly enter a new query, but this time I will specify the use of big bank uh, database uh, or schema, and I want to enumerate tables this time. There you go. So it took a few seconds, and as you can see, in the Big Bank uh, database, or schema, eight tables were found. So one looked quite interesting, the credit card one. So we'll look at credit card. Sorry for the typos. And now I want to dump all its data. So look at that, uh, we were able to easily download all credit card numbers from the credit card tables in the big bank um, schema. And you know, it, it's very easy for an attacker to use that, like that's an easy, easy attack. As you can see, it doesn't require much knowledge from an attacker. But a question you have to ask yourself is like, if we were able to run this attack, how would you know that an attacker has stolen all credit card numbers from your database table. Hmm. For with most applications I've looked at, um, 
there's the logging is not done properly and so on. So it's very difficult for a forensic investigator later to uh, understand how the attack was performed. So back to this, I hope that was enough to convince you that um, a tiny vulnerability could lead to disastrous uh, outcomes. In this case, downloading the entire database. But you know, what about blindness SQL injection? Or, you know, are you safe if you use the latest .NET framework? Or I know, can attack hackers launch SQL attacks, SQL injection attacks against web services? Is Ajax safe? Or, and what are the, the effective safeguards against these attacks? So if you want to know the answers to these questions, I encourage you to come visit us at AppSec Europe 2016. Again, I'll be giving the OWASP Top 10 Exploitation and Effective Safeguards course on June 27th, a three-day class in Rome, Italy, and it's followed by the, the conference with top-notch world-class uh, speakers uh, from June 30th to July 1st. So come join us at AppSec Europe 2016 this summer. Thank you.